When it comes to having the talk, some parents get all fired up about when we should teach our kids about puberty and what exactly we should call their, um, whatchamacallits. <laughs> In one corner, you have the informers, who, I'm guessing, start a frank and earnest discussion with their, about sexuality with their children in utero. These parents often use terms that even I, an adult by most standards, <laughs> barely understand without a medical dictionary or without giggling. <laughs> in the other corner, you have the avoiders who would prefer to wait until sometime after college to talk to the kids about their, <laughs> about their nether parts. These parents often use words like nether parts in <laughs> instead of um, whatever those thingamajigs are really called. While I'm obviously an avoider by nature, I've pretty much played the sex talk issue by ear with my kids. Some of you probably recognize play it by ear as parenting code for I ignore it until I absolutely can't ignore it anymore. <laughs> then I ignore it for a few more days. Then it comes up again and I have to stall because I was caught off guard and quite frankly, I was hoping they'd forget about it. <laughs> I am not suggesting that this is the most effective or mature way of handling the subject. <laughs> I know there are strong arguments with impassioned supporters for empowering our children with the right terminology at a young age, and for the most part, I agree. I know I should put on my serious grown-up face and approach the topic with the gravity and dignity it deserves. But life is spontaneous, and kids are funny, and I am awkward. <laughs> Which means that, despite my best intentions, sometimes an unexpected discussion about S-E-X <laughs> devolves into me laughing in a crumpled mass on the floor like a second grader who just heard the word boobies for the first time. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm proud, but it happens. <laughs> also, I mostly blame the children. Take my toddler, for example. At two, she followed me everywhere, including the bathroom. She didn't really care what I was doing in there, she just wanted to hang out and discuss Polly Pockets until I was finished. <laughs> Which was fine until one day when I was on my lady time, whatever you want to call it, and she spied me with my feminine unmentionables. She then came to the obvious conclusion, which she proceeded to announce at top volume to the universe at large. Mommy puts paper towels in her front buns. <laughs> After that, you'd think I'd at least learn to keep my lady time accessories under wraps, but no. <laughs> Another time, as I packed for vacation, my oldest daughter spied my tampons. There were roughly a skadillion other things in my bag, but naturally the tampons were what caught her fancy. What are those? She asked sweetly. <laughs> They're just tampons. <laughs> I used the most casual tone possible, hoping to discourage any further conversation. <laughs> that would likely scar us both for life. We had to be out the door in 20 minutes, and I knew this wasn't going to go well if I had to hurry through it. I needed a chance to formulate my real answer, put on my serious grown-up face, and perhaps drink heavily. <laughs> well, what are they for? Oh, they're for women to use. You don't have to worry about that yet. A tossle of the hair, and done. <laughs> No, not done. But what are they for? Obviously, some sort of explanation was in order, but I hadn't envisioned the talk with my eldest daughter transpiring on the hallway floor in front of the linen closet with the contents of my toiletries bag splayed out on the carpet between us. It's difficult to have a magical bonding moment under those conditions, trust me. So I opted to give her the Cliff's Notes description of puberty and hoped that would temporarily satisfy her curiosity. Mere minutes later, I was wrapping up. At the end of the month, your body cleans itself out so it can start over. That's where the tampon comes in. It um, keeps all that stuff from getting on your clothes. Understandably, she looked puzzled. <laughs> you have to use a tampon for that? 
At this point, I tried to explain that pads were another option, but she started laughing when I described them as long, soft, absorbent stickers that you put in your underwear. <laughs> Pretty soon we were both giggling and I congratulated myself for successfully diffusing her questions without scarring her for life. I can be so naive sometimes. <laughs> As our gales of laughter subsided, she persisted. But what about the tampon? Do you wipe with it like toilet paper? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I was hoping to avoid a whole anatomy lesson, so I said simply, no, you put it inside your body. Her smile instantly dissolved into a look of pure shock and horror. Aghast, she blurted out, You eat it? <laughs> and scarred for life. <laughs> Which is why when it comes to discussing ding-dongs and front buns, I am and shall ever remain an avoider by nature. Thank <laughs> you.